Please report to the Kiana system. Our partnership with the Krenum is starting to bear fruit, but the project may... You are cleared for docking. Greetings. On behalf of Captain Cogren and Alliance Command, I am pleased to welcome you to our research station. The Captain is completing his preparations. In the meantime, I will give you a tour of the facility where we are building a weapon that will end the Iconian threat once and for all. Follow me. Our researchers can explain how the weapon works and answer any questions you may have. Here, we have the development area. How much do you know about the Krenum, Seven of Nine? The Borg have extensive records on the Krenum. They were a species of great interest to the Collective. I'm not sure I like the idea of the Borg studying us like a bug in a petri dish. I'm not sure I like the idea of the Borg studying anyone. And what about the Iconians? The Collective spent a great deal of resources pursuing Iconian technology. They believed the species to be extinct. They were incorrect. So much for the Borg knowing everything. The Iconian's technology is far beyond even the capabilities of the Borg. Fine, but what about shielding the ship that's using the weapon? We haven't solved the paradox problem yet. This is not my first experience with alternate timelines. It would be possible to develop a form of temporal shielding to protect this vessel from alterations in the timeline. Welcome to our facility. I'm working with one of the teams here to develop the time ship and choose a target. What we do is different from time travel. Anorex's designs are actually for a weapon that can remove elements from the time stream completely, and then time reshapes itself to account for that absence. In some ways, yes. Once the weapon is fired, it can create an entirely new reality, and anyone or anything that isn't temporally shielded will be a part of that reality. That's why we have to proceed slowly. If we're not careful, we could change everything we know, and not even know what's happened. Think of the possibilities. We could reverse the effects of wars, stop threats like the Iconians, even turn back time and eliminate the Borg. This is a weapon, but it's one that can make a better galaxy. Captain Cogren's briefing is about to begin. Follow me to the conference room. about your victories against the Iconians. It is an honor to work with a warrior like yourself. We are almost ready to begin. First, however, Agent Cray would like a word. Greetings. My name is Philip Cray. I'm the liaison from Temporal Investigations for this project. <laughs> well, where do I start? I'm 157 years old. That's only because I spent 90 years caught in a temporal distortion in the Typhon Expanse, serving as an ensign under Captain Morgan Bateson in the USS Bozeman. Much of the crew of the Bozeman found it difficult to integrate back into Starfleet. So much had changed. The Temporal Intelligence Agency took in many of my shipmates, due to our first-hand knowledge of events that occurred in the past. So, 
That's where I ended up. The Federation has some serious concerns about possible violations of the Temporal Prime Directive. Normally, Starfleet personnel are strictly prohibited from directly interfering with historical events and should make every effort to maintain the timeline. Indeed, that should tell you how serious this war has become. If the Iconians win, there probably won't be anyone left to preserve the timeline. In this instance, my role is to ensure that we succeed in our task with the minimal possible disruption to the timeline, as well as to address any repercussions of those disruptions. I don't disagree. As a Starfleet officer, I am sworn to uphold the Temporal Prime Directive. Not only that, but I have seen firsthand the dangers that come from ignoring it. But as the Vulcans say, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. The Iconians cannot use time travel, and that makes it a weapon we can use against them. We must consider carefully whether it is too dangerous of a weapon to use at all. The war is not going as well as we might wish. Our fleets are protecting key worlds, but dozens of other targets have fallen to herald attacks. Civilian casualties are rising. We need to act. This facility is building a device to turn the tide in our favor. Captain Nog, what is the status of the weapon? We've had some setbacks, Captain. We're still weeks from a working prototype. No amount of temporal manipulation will change that. And have you chosen a target for the temporal incursion? We're still running simulations. We've configured the holodecks to help us evaluate the possible changes that occur after removing an element from the time stream. Some of these scenarios show promise, but none are exactly what you want. Very well. We cannot afford to wait another day. We are losing this war. We need to strike now. A direct engagement is our only option. We will put all our resources into a full attack on the Iconians. Every ship we can muster will be a part of one massive strike against the Herald Sphere. Captain Paris is already moving into position with the Vanguard. Ships here will report to the Herald Sphere as soon as possible. There will be more warriors in Stovokor tonight. But first, we will make the Iconians bleed. Glad to see you. This... it's just not working. The Iconians are gating in their ships, and they have far more reserves than we anticipated. I've called for a hold on the flagship assault until we regroup. There's no point in a suicide run. First, we need to help our ships in trouble. Can I count on you to help? This is Kyla Bex from the USS Keller.
Ship's shields are down and it's losing power. Looks like they're trying to interface with a sphere to give themselves a boost. This might be our one chance to board it and take control. I have three troop transports standing by.
position now. Boarding parties are on the flagship and reporting heavy resistance. I'll stay here and keep any reinforcements off your back. You need to transport to the flagship and help our teams there. What's your status? We can't reach any of the other away teams. Acknowledged. Sensors are picking up power fluctuations near your coordinates. The impact with the Quartar must have disrupted their systems. Start disabling anything you can reach. If we do enough damage, maybe that will help us take their ship. teams are attacking power junctions, but they are encountering heavy resistance. It would be an honor to join your team, sir. Away teams reporting in, sir. Heavy resistance and heavy casualties. Detecting life signs and weapon discharges dead ahead. Detecting Federation and Herald weapons fire beyond this door. There is also a power junction. trying to recharge her energy. Whoa, what are you doing over there? The fluctuations are increasing exponentially. Interesting, but it makes sense. The Iconians are energy beings. If Matara can't use the ship's systems, she'll use herself as a battery for the gateways. But that's probably dangerous for her. She's bleeding herself dry with every gateway. Keep at it. If you can drain enough of her energy, she might make herself vulnerable. Harold, reinforcements! We need to disable the other junction, sir. There is another power junction ahead.
is weakening. Keep disabling the power junctions. It's working! She's using her own energy to power the gateways. just over there. I am detecting a third junction ahead. Another junction just ahead, sir. If we can keep forcing the creature to use her own power, we can weaken her enough to defeat her. I am detecting strong energy signatures ahead. I believe it to be some kind of command center. contains four interface junctions. Yeah. 
reinforcements. Watch your back. bit of good news I've heard all day. Okay, we need to fall back. While there's still a chance, the Heralds will be coming back in force. These warriors died well, and they will not be forgotten.
Despite the extraordinary efforts of you and many others, our operation was a failure. We're still tooling up the casualties, but the cost was too great. The Heralds still stand. They have lost one Iconium, but if anything, that will only prolong the conflict. Defeating Matara was a combination of the sacrifice of Guroth and many others, your quick thinking and martial prowess, and the Iconian's arrogance. Matara did not believe an Iconian could die. The others will not make the same mistake. Indeed, but that is a small comfort to the warriors who have entered Stovacor this day. Those of us who remain will mourn, and then we survive another day. I don't think we have a choice now. We have to complete the Krenum device. Captain Cogburn wants it online immediately, but this isn't something we can rush. Cutting corners with temporal mechanics? That's how you end up with unsolvable time paradoxes. Look, I'll do whatever I can, but I'm scared of this technology. Building it will be the greatest challenge of my career, but actually altering time? I'm not sure anyone should have that much power. I want to personally commend you. Whatever success we had in this mission was thanks to you. The Iconians have lost their leader. Their unity is broken. That... That might give us an opening to end this war. The cost, though? All those people... I can't help but feel that I failed them. Our losses were great today. And we will mourn for every hero who died defending their galaxy. I am a warrior. I believe in honorable combat, direct tactics, and looking my enemy in the eye. Although you did manage to destroy Matara and break the unity of the Iconians, I now see that we cannot use traditional combat to defeat them. Captain Nog and his team will continue their work on the weapon. It may be our only option. 